All right, back here again at Silver Arrow Service. We have an F430 on the lift today. We're gonna go through how to do a four-wheel brake job, complete front and rear pads and rotors. Uh, this one's gone far too many miles and ran them far closer than I'd like to see. So we'll show you step-by-step -step replacement of the pads, the rotors, cleaning the calipers, and replacement of the sensors. We've removed the wheels and we're going to run through real quick the tools you're going to need to do this job. Um, going to need a torque wrench for reassembly of everything. I'm doing it in 3 8 So we have a 3 8 torque wrench, a 3 8 ratchet. This is just a 10 millimeter Allen socket here for removing the actual caliper itself. We have a 10 millimeter socket on a quarter inch ratchet for removing the sensor retaining bolt. We have a hammer for driving a 1 8 punch for removing the actual pins that hold the pads in and just a regular run-of-the-mill wire brush for cleaning up the hub, cleaning up the uh, actual caliper itself so that we can get a nice surface for those pads to run in. All right, here we are at the front of the vehicle having a look at these brakes. Here's your rotor, which you can see has quite a few of these wear scores. Uh, the drill marks are, are full, chock full of brake pad material. And right here we can see the actual brake pad itself. I have a standard inspection tool. We're gonna check those right here. And as you can see, those are worn right down beyond two millimeters even. And state spec in New Hampshire is at 230 seconds or below fail state inspection. So these are not only worn completely, but beyond state inspectable. All right, so we're gonna take that 1 8 punch. And if you look right here in the caliper, you can see the slide pin. We're gonna go ahead, line that up uh, right there. Be careful not to mark up the paint on this pretty caliper. And we're just gonna hammer those pins right out of the caliper. And then it takes a little bit of finagling because of the pressure from the spring, spring clip, but we're gonna go ahead and push those through. It might take a pick, might take some pliers, but you'll get them out and it should slide out. So I drove out those retaining pins for the pads themselves. That's what these look like. Uh, some wear on those, some dirt on those are pretty normal. We're going to replace these with the new pads. Here's the spring clip that holds the pads in with those two pins holding it like this. This is also going to be replaced. Um, the pads you should be able to reach in and compress by hand. Uh, sometimes they get a little stiff. Don't be afraid to use a screwdriver or something. Pry against the caliper because, or against the rotor because we are replacing that. Collapse those pistons. I like to use the pad to collapse the pistons. And then that pad should just slide right out. Looks like this. This one you can tell is pretty well spent. And you're gonna do the same thing in the rear. Um, you're gonna wanna be careful because the sensor is in there. If you don't have new sensors, you're going to need to be careful around that so that you don't smash that sensor on you and then you're left holding the bag. So we've lifted up the car so you can see what's going on behind the caliper. We have the sensor right here still in the pad. Um, those are kind of hard to get out. If you're brave, you can try to get them out using a small screwdriver or a pick. And this sensor wire is routed through the caliper up to the back of the knuckle. This is a 10 millimeter bolt on this little wire retainer into this connector right here, um, which is also bolted to the knuckle using an eight millimeter nut. When we go to replace this, I'll show you what it looks like when you remove this and the ground and how to remove the retaining bracket from the connector itself and remove the connector from the car's chassis harness. All right, so we've gone ahead. I've relaxed this pad using a flathead screwdriver again between the pad right here and the rotor itself. And I'll show kind of the tricks to getting this sensor out in one piece. I do recommend replacing them because this can be very difficult at times. As you can see, there's a metal retaining pin right here. I'm just using a pocket screwdriver to try and get to that.
So I've gotten this sensor out. As you can see, those are those metal retaining clips I was talking about. And the reason I like to replace these, you can see that the wire right here has been run through by the rotor, which is actually what grounds to the rotor and triggers that uh, brake pad wear sensor light that you see on the dashboard. So even though we were able to get this out in one piece, this one will need to be replaced because it has worn through. So I've gone ahead and removed the 8 millimeter nut right here and the 10 millimeter bolt for this uh, retainer. And you should be able to just wiggle these loose. Here's that ground uh, uh, connector for that chassis harness. And this will just slide off. It's a pretty tight fit here, so some finagling will have to be done. And you can see it's just got a little thumb tab. You can pop that up and it pops right up. This is gonna stay with the car. I like to just look in there, make sure that it doesn't look too dirty, no green, no fungus or anything like that. And you'll need to remove this metal bracket from the old sensor connector itself. We'll be saving this and putting it on the new sensor. So we've gone ahead and removed both of our pads. As you can see right here, those were well-worn beyond the money. Um, so it was definitely time for these. Um, so now that those are out of the way, we're gonna go ahead and remove the caliper itself. Uh, you can see we have two of these 10 millimeter Allens and we're just gonna put our socket right in there like that. And it's uh, lefty loosey, righty tighty, nothing uh, out of the ordinary. And these are tightened to, I believe, 82 Newton meters. So they're gonna take some force to break free. So we've got the pads out, unbolted the caliper, and because this is a fixed caliper, it has a hard line that wraps around the knuckle. You're gonna to wanna to remove, there's a retaining horseshoe clip. Remove that so that you can move the caliper freely. I've gone ahead, used a bungee cord, wrapped it around the upper wishbone here so that we can suspend this caliper out of our way and go ahead and remove the rotor. Because this is a New England car, you can see it's got corrosion around the hub. Um, so we're gonna to have to go ahead and if your car has the retaining bolts, you're gonna to wanna to remove those. Uh, the aftermarket wheels on this don't allow for those retaining bolts, so those aren't shown. Um, they should just be a 10 millimeter or 12 millimeter, um, but because this is stuck due to that corrosion, I'm gonna go ahead and give it a, a bit of a hit with a hammer. Uh, not too hard to shock the bearing or anything, but enough to shock this uh, rotor free. gotten the rotor out of the way you can see all of this corrosion around the center of the hub itself this is where that rotor seats against the back and against the center so using just a regular industrial wire brush I'm gonna go ahead and just clean all of that corrosion off it doesn't have to look perfect but you should be able to run your hand around there I like to use my pinky run it around there and just make sure that it's kind of smooth make sure that that rotor is gonna sit nice and flush Also a quick note, if you're sensitive, COPD, or just care about your body or, or what have you, you may wanna wear a mask for doing this. I don't wear one, I grew a filter, so that's why I don't wear one, uh, it is recommended. So we've gone ahead, cleaned that hub surface. This is the rotor itself, our brand new rotor going on, fresh out of the bag. It doesn't come with any of the shipping oils, Cosmoline, anything like that on it. So these are good to just bolt straight onto the hub. Normally, if your car has those retaining bolts, you're gonna to wanna to go ahead and put them on here before you let it go. If those aren't in there, there is a chance these could fall. So our rotor is on. We're gonna go ahead and uh, reverse the, the assembly or the disassembly process to put it back together. I freed our caliper from my bungee cord that I had over the A-arm. I'm gonna take one of the bolts. I like to put it in the top one so I can get the caliper lined up before I put the bottom one in and tighten everything down. So the caliper is in, I've snugged up those two 10 millimeters. I'm gonna use our click type torque wrench. Uh, if you saw our oil change video, you're familiar with this. I've spun it up, set it to the 84 Newton meters that these calipers call for. I'm just gonna go ahead and tighten those until it clicks. 
our caliper is in, torqued down. We're gonna go ahead and prep our new pads to go in. You can see there are arrows on these pads indicating their direction of rotation. So as the car is going forward, the way the rotor is uh, rotating is the way that you want the arrow to go. So this one would be a rear pad for that front caliper or inboard, not rear, inboard pad for the passenger side caliper. This is going to be your outboard pad, judging by the arrow, the way that it's installed. It'll be going with the rotation of the, of the rotor as it goes forward. We're gonna use the Brembo uh, copper lube that they send with the brake kit. I like to put two dabs where the pistons are gonna contact those uh, pads. I like to rub them in so anywhere that piston touches is gonna be nicely lubricated. You don't need a lot. This is one of those instances where less is more. A little touch that I do is where the pad actually rides inside the caliper bracket. I like to put just a little smear of that lubrication there as well, just so that if there is any contaminants still left in that caliper after we use the wire brush and file to clean it out, this will sort of help lubricate so that these don't jam up. So we've gone ahead, lubed up our pads. I'm just gonna slide those in. I like to slide them in without the sensor, um, just so we don't risk damaging any of those small wires or anything. And I'll show you how to slide in that sensor once the pad is in. There we go. So I've gone ahead, I've slid one of our pad retaining uh, pins into the caliper. Uh, that's just to hold the pad in place while we try and put this sensor in. Uh, it's important to note the way the sensor goes. You have a thin side and a thick side on this uh, wear sensor. The thick side is gonna go towards your rotor. The thin side goes towards the back of the caliper. If you have the pad pressed all the way towards the back of the caliper, you're gonna really have to fight to put this in. So I use a little screwdriver or something to try and just pull this away from the body of the caliper a little bit. And you'll just push the sensor right into this gap in the pad until the metal clip clicks, you'll hear it, or not. But it's uh, all set right there. I like to run the wire through this in the caliper before I go any further. And you can just let that dangle because the caliper is holding up the weight of this connector. All right, so we're gonna slide this uh, retaining spring back into our caliper. You just sneak it by the first pin. I always like to put one pin in first. And then you gotta use a bit of thumb pressure. Don't be afraid to bend this a little bit slide that pin in. You want the pin to go in front of that. Kind of use your thumbs, guide it in. And once it stops, you're gonna have to finagle. There's a little pilot pin on the front of that. This is about where it's gonna stop. Make sure that this spring is centered. And then we're gonna use that 1 8 punch again to push both of these pins in until they stop moving. You'll hear a difference in the, in the uh, hammer once you get those seated. So now we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna do the rear brakes on this uh, F430. You can see that it has two different calipers on here. This is your main brake caliper and this is your e-brake caliper. The main brake caliper is done the exact same way as the front brake, so there's no need to redo that demonstration. But on the rear brake, or on the e-brake caliper, it is fully mechanical, so you'll, on the back side, you'll see that there's two Allens, and this Allen, which I've already taken out, is actually very close to the control arm. So what you'll probably need to do is modify a normal Allen wrench, which we've gone ahead and done, so that we can fit it in here and be able to get this bolt out. Um, once you have those two bolts out, this one and the one that's up here, this is a six millimeter and this is an eight millimeter. This will come right off. And then you'll see inside here, you'll have to slide this brake pad forward on the two slides. And you'll notice that there's two little holes inside the piston. What I went ahead and did is used a, a pair of curved needle nose and in order to retract that piston, you'll put these inside here and you'll actually have to rotate the whole piston assembly and it screws in like a big screw. And that's how you retract that. 
All right, this concludes our video on doing a four-wheel brake service on a Ferrari F430. Um, if you have any questions on this, uh, if you have any questions on an F430 or any questions in general, feel free to call, click, or visit silverarrowservice.com. I'm Jeff. This is Josh. Thanks for watching.